Hey everyone, this is Tally with TGN.TV and welcome to another episode of Who Needs CC? Question mark. Blackrock Caverns, episode 5. I've gotten a lot of requests for Blackrock Caverns actually, and I don't even know why. I mean, Blackrock Caverns is probably one of the most easiest heroics to run uh, in Cataclysm. But uh, here we go. We had a Resto Shaman, Boomkin, Shadow Priest, and Rogue to start. Keyword, folks. <laughs> Keyword to start. All right. So here we go. We're going to get right to business here. Now, tanking or AoE tanking as a prop paladin in the gear that I have is pretty damn easy. Right here, I'm starting off and I'm like, oh man, I'm losing aggro already. This Boomkin must be like some sort of decked out eye level average 372 Boomkin. It just happens to, you know, be that I just don't have Righteous Fucking Fury on. So I put on Righteous Fury. I get you know a hold of my aggro finally, and we continue with uh, the instance after getting these first two down. These flame callers, man, they do a lot of damage. I've actually seen people wipe to just these first two set of trash uh, in Black Rock Caverns. Now this is my favorite room in the entire instance. Now if you think to yourself, man, Tally, you've had some bad luck in the past in some of these uh, who needs CC with some players. Is it, good, is it the same this time around? And the uh, answer is uh, yes, it is actually the same time this around. So. I'm doing my normal thing. I, I take all these mobs and I tank them all at the same time. Now, rotation for AoE tanking as a prop paladin, pretty simple. Get your three holy power points up, hit Inquisition, and face roll. Does it, it really nowadays it doesn't even matter what you hit. You can go Avenger Shield, Consecration, Holy Wrath, Holy Wrath, Consecration, Avenger Shield, Avenger Shield, blah blah blah. Doesn't matter. As long as you're hitting Hammer of the Righteous, uh every C every C D that's up, then you're fine. All right, just hammer, 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 anything else in between, but hammer off cooldown constantly, okay? So here I go. I'm going to pull this pat to the left, and then I'm going to pull all the mobs in front of me, you know, because I'm a boss. And uh, this is where it kind of gets a little uh, out of control, as they say. So here we go. I pull all these guys, and I'm like, all right, we're going to kill these guys before the boss comes back, guaranteed. All right, so I'm doing my rotation. Here we go. Hammer, Inquisition. Let's go back to hammer, hammer. Hammer, hammer, over and over, and over again. I'm just going to fucking motorboat my hammer button. And uh, here comes this pat. I see him at the corner of my eye. The fucking ogre's coming down. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to grab this guy really quick. But here comes the boss. And I'm like, it's going to get a little hairy. And I'm talking like 50-year-old, you know, milf, milf, milf hairy. All right, I'm, th here it comes. Oh, God, the boss is going to do the animation. Rawr. Oh, and he pulls the shit behind him. This is going to suck ass. Here we go. So I have all these mobs on me, okay? So first instinct, pop shield wall. Get but get yourself situated. Is it, if this ever happens to you, or if you just want to do this for fun, you can do it. I don't like to do it in pugs. I would do it with a guild group because they would probably AOE this all down, I'd say, in 30 seconds. But I'm in a pug here that's doing pretty terrible damage. I'm doing like 19k DPS here. Everyone else is doing like half of that. The Boomkin is the only one who's keeping up. So look how many mobs I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have like nine mobs on me at the same time. The boss plus all these ads. And these ads, mind you, they stun you. Okay? And they do a lot of magic damage to you. And uh, there goes the druid popping tranquility. Right now, I'm not even giving a shit about my Inquisition. I don't care about rotation. I'm just hitting hammer, 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 hammer. Until I get my three holy power points, and I'm wogging. I'm wogging like you read about, motherfucker, okay? I'm just hitting that button. I'm fucking spamming the shit out of it until I can just heal myself up to full. As you guys, and, you know, to add insult to injury, look at the shaman's uh, mana. He's basically depleted. He has about, I'd say, I'm looking down there, like 10% uh, mana, and he's barely using it, too. I guess he's trying to conserve it because you know, he knows what's coming. So, you know, I use my holy wrath. I grab all these ads, hammer them together to me. And we keep going on the boss. Now, for, I guess, the strategy of the boss, if no one's ever done Black Rock Karens before, uh, Bone Crusher basically uh, does a Quake that does AoE damage. Um, and he, then he does this, Chains of Woe. He'll, like, run to the middle. He never used to do that, though. It must be new. He runs to the middle, casts Chains of Woe. He chains everyone in place. And you have to attack the chains in order to get out. And then you have, like, three seconds to get out until he does his crazy whirlwind, which would kill baddies. Oh. Oh, look, the rogue and the shadow priest died to the whirlwind. God, I guess you just can't run away for three seconds, can you? It must be so hard just to press your strafe button or your 
forward button and just fucking move. But no, I guess not. I guess they just want to die and watch me fucking solo this shit with the Boomkin for the next 20 minutes. Ah, <sighs> Yeah, that's right. This is another Who Needs CC with Tally Gets Bad Players. Like... Uh, you ever see Ru- I mean, everyone watches Rurikan's uh, heroic videos? He does an amazing job with his, all his heroic videos, and uh, I always notice Rurikan either he pre-mades his shit and doesn't do it raw like I do, or he just gets lucky because he gets like some of the most competent players in the world under his belt that he finishes his heroics in I don't know like. 25 30 minutes on the other hand i get this shit where we wipe the trash we almost wipe to every boss and we take 45 minutes to finish this fucking dungeon but um for this video i basically sped up a lot of the trash um really i mean nowadays in world of warcraft and cataclysms do we really need to even know like you know how to tank trash i mean i can give you the rotation i have plenty of videos already for you guys out there on aoe tanking and um, this one's no different. Like I said, three holy power points, hit Inquisition, smash your face against the keyboard, uh, pop your wings whenever it's up, uh, hit your Grand Crusader, whatever it procs, and you'll basically be good for now and probably the rest of the expansion. And after the changes 4.1, uh, Paladin tanking will be even more easy and more face roll, which is basically the opposite of what Blizzard wanted to begin with, right? Blizzard was saying, oh, well, we want Holy Power to bring some sort of priority system. We want something new and exciting and rad for the Paladins. You know, we want them to have a challenge. We just don't want them to smash two buttons. And what happens? They make all these fucking changes because of all the QQ, because of PvP, fucking rep Paladins as well. And what happens now? Now we have a 20 second word of glory, sacred duty procs, of, procs off of anything you do. You can slap your dick on a fucking table and sacred duty is going to fucking proc. And this is what's happening. So um, yeah, face roll 4.1 paladins. If you, anyone wants to roll an easy tank class, uh, you're going to have tanking uh, BOA gear. Roll a prop paladin. It's going to be the most face roll class in the entire fucking game. But um, we're, so we're still fight, I'm still fighting this fucking guy. Jesus Christ. I think we're going to just finish him off right here. Uh, it, at this point, it was just me, the Boomkin, and the Shaman. And after the fight was over, I made a little joke, right? I was like, okay, well, this has been really fun. This is really awesome. Uh, you know, I guess it took us long enough. I said something like witty. What did I say? I said something. I'm going to read it right now because the screen's a little bit farther away from me than usual because I'm trying to work with this whole camera thing. Um, I go, now that's a boss fight. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, how come the Shaman's not resing anyone? All right, so I'm going to start resing people. I have to wait till I get my mana. I got my mana full. I'm resing the... Um, the uh, Shadow Priest here. And there he goes. The Shaman fucking leaves. Can you believe this shit? The Shaman just fucking goes. He leaves. I'm saying to myself, why would you leave? Did I not just show you that I'm one of like, the proest motherfuckers out there? I just tanked the entire room. Didn't die. Kept myself alive with just word of glory because your heals were weak ass. And you probably didn't pop Mana Tide at all throughout the whole encounter. You know, to get your own mana back up. You were just sitting there looking fucking pretty. Giving me a heal every 20 seconds. And he leaves the dungeon. On fucking believable and i can't stand people like that you know sometimes you're doing heroics and you get priests that fucking yell at you all the time Tauli, you're going too fast you have to slow down i can't keep up with you Tauli, next time you pull like that i'm going to quit i'm going to leave okay i'm a fucking tank do you really do you think i give a shit if anyone leaves my five-man group in a random who gives it that looks pretty cool by the way you know speeding it up the whole fire coming out sorry i get easily distracted it's like ooh, shiny but do you think I give a shit if a DPS or a healer leaves? I just hit the Q button and bam! In two seconds I get something just like that. That's how easy it is. You know, the whole you're put in front of the Q thing. So um, here we go. We're up to the second boss. Now this right here, folks, is like basically the five-man group killer. This boss right here. And I remember in beta, and I believe in the beginning of Cataclysm, you were able to bypass this boss and continue on to the next boss um, without having to kill it. You, you could skip it. But I believe now Blizzard actually forces you to kill this boss in order to advance to the third boss. Either that or you have to, you know, fucking get through like those 20 zealots that Raz kills for you. But um, we're going to kill this zealot right here. Then we're going to get to the next boss. This is going to be fucking great. So, as usual, I asked, do you guys know how to do this fight? Which, who's taking the beam? So, I think we had, like, I forgot who took the left and, competent people took the left and the right beam. The Boomkin took the right beam. I believe the healer took the left beam. Um, the Shadow Priest just stood around, looked pretty, and the Rogue said, I'll take the center beam. And I'm like, he goes, I guess I'll take center. I'm saying to myself, well, he said the words, I guess. Mind you, folks, whenever you're in a heroic, you always want to know what everyone's saying. 
Because one little word like I guess is a doubtful term. And that could possibly mean that he is going to blow it for you. That's what she's no, that's not what she said. I'll use another one that later. Don't worry about that. He <laughs> and um so the rogue is gonna take the middle. Um and let's see, let's do a little prediction. 50-50, let's see, is the rogue gonna succeed? Is the rogue gonna fail? I'm gonna have to go with the rogue is going to fail. He does, because I was I, I just did the dungeon myself and I know and I'm telling you, he fucking failed, okay? Like hardcore. I think he got feared, and then when he got feared, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know to run. He didn't know if he should run back to the beam or if I was going to cover for him. I probably should have covered for him, but I, I, I really don't care. I'm not here to babysit. I'm not here to teach people. You know what? When I was doing these dungeons in beta, I researched them. All right, before I went into any heroic, I looked on Google, I looked on YouTube to see if anyone did these dungeons, and I, you know, just so I could be prepared for when I did them. So here we go. The rogue's going to go right there into the middle, and uh, I'm tanking the boss, of course. Who else would be? I'm the one with the shield and the sword. My new mace. Mace of Acid Death. 372 eye level from Heroic Maloriac. Got it last night. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and people are asking uh, the difference in avoidance between the Fang of Twilight Heroic and the um, uh, Mace of Acid Death. It's a, it's a .04 avoidance difference. So I stuck with the Mace of Acid Death because I'm a stat junkie and that's maximizing my stats. So uh, here we go. The rogue is not even on the ball. There you go. I'm looking at myself, and like 90% of the entire fight, the rogue isn't even on the fucking zealot. I'm like, this is fucking great. So just like the achievement, you know, I'm going to tank the zealot. I'm going to interrupt dark command off the boss when I can, and I'm going to interrupt the zealot whenever I can when he does shadow strike. Um, Tidy Plates did some changes recently. I can now see actually um, my debuffs on both uh, on all the bars at the same time, which is kind of like a little bit of a clusterfuck because when I'm taking six or seven things at the same time, all I'm seeing is like 50 million different, you know, debuffs. Basically, they're all the same because I only really have three that I put up. Four if you count whenever you pop your Avenger Shield on them. But uh, yeah, I'm basically tanking this like a pro right here. Uh, I'm getting some pretty decent heals from the, uh, the Disc Priest there. By the way, that's what we got. We got... Oh, man. When I saw the Disc Priest one, I was like, yes! Fucking Jersey Fist Pump. Mm. Fucking fist pump that shit when I saw that we got a disc priest because disc priests right now are OP as fuck in any in any aspect of the word in raids in dungeons in PvP they're back to form now now you're seeing a lot more of the uh, disc priest rogue two combos yeah uh, you know PMR priest mage rogue is you know d having its nice little comeback from you know priests being totally you know, useless before this last big patch that came out with all the changes. So we ended up killing this zealot, and now we're, you know, hopefully I'm praying to God. I'm like, please, let's just kill this shit really quick. I can't stand doing this anymore. If I get one more zealot, I don't have any cooldowns. If you look, my divine protection is going to come up soon. My um, guardian of the ancient kings is coming up in a minute. I have I have raid wall, but who needs raid wall? It doesn't even fucking help me at all. Raid wall is for the entire raid, not myself. Uh, I could pop Holy Radiance, but that's about it. But obviously, the Disc Priest and the Boomkin, kudos to you guys. You knew what the fuck you were doing. You held it together while this rogue fucked up. But once again, this was the rogue's first time in this instance. And, you know, I guess I'll cut him some slack. I always cut first timers some slack. Although, you should always do your research before you go into any dungeon. Because uh, what's going to happen is people who are new to Cataclysm, they're going to, you know, type in Black Rock Caverns, and they're going to see, who needs CC Episode 5? And they're going to be like, oh, man, this Tally guy, he, he shows us the do's and don'ts of all these all this shit, huh? So um, the Shadow Priest leaves. I don't know why. He decided that he had to go for whatever reason, probably because, I mean, is it me? Maybe it is me. I don't know. Am I pulling too fast? Am I being too reckless? I mean, technically, we haven't died up till now, right? Everything's gone peachy keen. The bosses have died. Everything's been just ducky. Little southern voice right there. Let's get her done. And uh, I love the I love anything with like five or more ads or a pack of five or more ads. It's amazing because you get to see all that damage that you're doing. With your hammer of the righteous. And there he goes. <laughs> and the Boomkin kicks him. The reason said fail. Fucking funny Boomkin. And I was talking to the Boomkin. I was like, you know what, dude? You're probably the only one out of this entire group that knows what the fuck's going on. And if you think I'm going to stop pulling just because we're missing a person. No, that's not the case. I was probably making up for that person's DPS to begin with. So um, what do we get now? I forgot. Wait, did the rogue leave too? 
Oh no, the rogue's there. What happened? The, the rogue didn't seem like he was in my uh, range. But uh, we got a warlock. I, I guess that's good. I mean, I don't know how good warlocks are nowadays. I haven't really, you know, I just own them in PvP now rather than anything. Fucking frost mages are still OP. I don't care what the fuck they say. By the way, nice hammer. Fuck your face. 16.3. Woo woo. Um, let's get rid of these zealots here. See, if you didn't actually defeat the second boss and you tried to skip it, you would end up right here. And right here, you would have to actually, I don't even know if you can kill all these mobs. You, you would have to have some sort of amazing, crazy tank here, probably like mine, with an amazing healer, which I don't have, to actually kill all these ads in order to advance. Now, the next boss is my favorite boss. Why? Because I can get the achievement. Actually, I think I've, I've gotten the achievement for any group I've ever been in every single time I've done this boss. And I use a very easy strategy, which I basically almost fucked up when I was doing this. Um, with this strategy, uh, what I just do is I just get him to three stacks, pull him out, three stacks, pull him out, three stacks, pull him out. Once he gets up to ten stacks, I pull him in and out for one stack only. But that didn't go so well this time. All I know is that once he's at around 500, 400k HP left, um, and he has about 12 stacks, I just put him in the center and I leave him in the fucking lava uh, waterfall thing there. I just leave him in the lava fall. It's called the lava fall. I just leave him in the lava fall until he gets like 19 stacks and we kill him. That way people get the achievement, which is I think uh, 15, uh, letting, killing him while he has 15 stacks of the, um, the buff. Now, the way this fight works is the boss has a uh, damage reduction buff on him. He takes no damage whatsoever until you put him in the lava fall. Once you put him in the lava fall, then he gains another buff, which makes him deal, deal more fire damage to the entire raid, but he also takes more damage. So you burn him down while he's doing damage to you at the same time, the more stacks he has. So you don't want to stack him up too quickly. You want to kind of gradually just put him in, put him out, put it in, put it out. Put it in real fast. Take it out real fast. That's what she said. <laughs> Got it. All right. I was just waiting like the last 10 minutes for that one. So you put him in the lava fall. There he is. Put him in. Put him in, Tauli. There we go. Pull him back out. And that's basically the entire fight. You just do that. And if you look at the buff uh, on his unit frame there, it's about to actually, it's about like five seconds left until it goes away. And if you let, now what happens is if you let that buff go, he'll go back to taking no damage and he'll spawn three ads, and when you kill those three ads, they leave these these lava pools on the ground, which have the same effect as the lava fall. So these ads leave leave this uh, pool of lava on the ground, and if you put the boss in that pool of lava, he gains stacks just as well. So some people do the strategy of put him in the lava at first, DPS him down really hard, let the ads come out, kill the ads, and then just use the pools of lava uh, that the ads give you to kill the boss. But I, I don't do that. I I don't listen to rules very much. I don't listen to, you know, etiquette and organization. Although I do respect a lot of great heroic etiquette. Like, you know, if you're a DPS, don't roll on tank gear. If you're a tank, don't roll on DPS gear. You know, you so many times you see these fucking tanks who come in and say, oh, well, I'm really DPS, but I'm just tanking this because I have the gear for it. And they start taking gear from DPS. I don't like that. I don't respect that at all. Uh, same goes with caster gear, healers, and DPS and shit like that. You know... If you queue for a dungeon as a healer, you know, looking for, you know, DPS gear, like if you're a holy paladin and you're looking for, you know, proc gear, don't make the stupid excuse saying that, well, I need to run heroics to get the fucking proc gear to run heroics. Bullshit. There's so much blacksmithing gear out there for proc paladins and there's so much BOA, BOA gear and so much, you know, gear that you can get from valor points just from, you know, doing your own shit like keep healing that it wouldn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just blows when you're a tank and a DPS rolls on your tank gear. Like, why is he rolling on your tank gear? Why can't that DPS just continue to DPS fucking heroics, gain his justice points, and then buy, like, you know, the justice points gear and BOE gear and then run his own shit? I don't know. I just like proper tank etiquette, you know, or proper raid group etiquette when it comes to running heroics. Now, this right here, this is like the... Uh the wipe fest of most fucking pugs that I've seen. Surprisingly, we did not wipe on this aspect of the dungeon. Uh, usually, we would pull this here. <laughs> I, I usually stay up here because we could probably kill it before those two ads come back up. And uh, usually, what happens is someone leaves their totems. Someone just stands there. You know, so, some something always goes wrong here. But, you know, fortunately, nothing went wrong. We actually killed this mob. Uh. <sighs> Hold on, my... Fucking eyes just crossed on that one. Birdo staff. 
And uh, we wait for the pack to come back up. We, we let we waited another one drop. Jesus Christ. We let the uh, pack go up, go back down, and then we're going to continue. Here we go. And we're, now we're going to go into super speed mode here. Yeah, there's no way I would have done commentary for all like 50 minutes of this dungeon. You know, with all the mistakes that were made, the fights that took longer because people were fucking up. There's no way I would have been able to do that. But uh, we take these ads out pretty quick. And um, here we go. Oh, everyone stack. And usually there's always that one, right? There's always that one guy that just doesn't fucking stack. He's like, well, I'm going to stay out here by myself. I wonder why everyone stacked. Meteor. And he's fucking dead. You know, not me. Not me. I tell everyone, you better stack the fuck on me so we don't die. We continue doing this dungeon. Uh, these next trash packs are very tricky if you're a paladin. You always want to keep your silences up. You want to keep your war stomp ready um, because they do a lot of damage. They do that bone bore. What is it? Bore cast. And then they put you, put you in this prism and all the damage together is too much. Right here, I'm blowing every cooldown. Why? Because the healer's AFK. According to him, he DC'd. But I'm going to say he was AFK because usually when someone DCs after a while, you see them DC. He just, you know, was there and then he came back and healed me a little bit toward the end. So now beauty. They changed beauty since the last time I've done it. Just goes to show you how long it's been since I've done a fucking heroic. I'd have to say at least six, seven weeks. And um, there's only two dogs now. Awesome. So now we only need two forms of CC as opposed to three. Imagine if you were in a fucking group doing beauty before this change. Even now. Imagine you get like Death Knight, Death Knight Warrior. Or two warriors and a Death Knight as your, uh, as your group comp. Along with a healer and a tank. You're fucked. You're basically fucked in the asshole. You know what I'm saying? There's no... you. Even Chuck Norris probably couldn't even save you from that one. Not even Charlie Sheen and his warlock magic. None of that shit's going to be able to save you. By the way, have you seen Charlie Sheen? Have you seen his, like, uh... his? He's doing all these shows, and he's being booed off a stage in fucking, like, Detroit and Chicago. He is just... Poor guy, man. I feel sorry for him. Fucking Wild Thing. Whatever happened to Wild Thing? Wild Thing was the man. Now, Beauty fears you. Uh, knocks you back. If you aggro the puppies, the puppies will come and they will do what they just did right there to the warlock. They will leave a puddle of lava on the ground, which hits for a shit ton. Uh, probably not me, of course, but uh, anyone else will probably get hit hard. So at this point, uh, I think he re CC'd the uh, dog, so I'm able to actually, you know, just tank the goddamn uh, beauty. Definitely not beautiful. I mean, that's beauty. I don't even know. It looks like he got. You know, hit in the face with a bag of fucking nickels or something. God knows what. But uh, this fight's pretty straightforward. Um, did I even get, like, one fear ward in this entire uh, fight? Probably not. We don't have a shaman, so we don't have tremor totem. I hate I hate when you're, like, I wish Blizzard, if they really want to balance the game, then honestly, everyone should have what everyone else has. You know, maybe everyone should have little unique things that everyone else doesn't have. Like, you know, prop paladins have Divine Guardian, which is an AoE raid wall. That's unique just to prop paladins. Nobody else has that. Holy paladins have aura mastery. You know, you have tranquility. You have, you know, a couple of cooldowns that are like it. But, I mean, it's just, it's just like they say, you know, bring, not having a prop paladin for, like, hard mode progression and cataclysm is pretty much stupid. Because that 20% raid wall is amazing for a lot of encounters. And, uh, yeah. So, let's see. Guardian of Iron. Man, it's going to be a while before I get exalted. I want to get exalted because I want that crazy fucking mount. You know, like the, the the Dark Phoenix or whatever. It's really purple. It's not even black, but... Not that I'm racist or anything. Oh, come on. Kill this thing. Like, honestly, the Heroic Dungeons are just a joke for me now. I mean, people tell me, Will Telly, you, you do, do this series, who needs CC? Question mark. And you kill it so easily because you completely overgear the content. Well, what do you want me to do? All right, you know what I'm going to do? Just for you guys, all right? Just for you guys. Next time I do who, sees, who needs CC question mark and quote me, I am going to wear a gray shield and a gray one-hander, okay? Quote me. Quote me. And I'm my next one, I'm probably going to do, um, what should I do next? Not Hall's Origination. I wouldn't last two seconds in there with a gray shield and a gray one-hander. Um, did I do? Have I done Lost City yet? I think I did Lost City, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to recheck. I'll have to check which ones I did and didn't do or which ones I have left to do. But uh, my next one, I promise you guys, I will use a, a gray one-hander and a gray shield. We'll see what happens then. You want me to do it naked too? I mean, I'm bound, I'll am bound. i do it with just a few pieces of gear. You guys go ahead. Post, post in the comments down here down here 
this is my first time doing a webcam, so I'm not sure where everything is. So, um, you know, I think uh, right now, if you're looking that way, you should probably be seeing a sexy beast tanking. Um, if you look down this way, right here, you should see the comments. I don't fucking know. Just continue watching the goddamn heroic. Jesus Christ. So um, we kill these uh, ragers. That's fine. And here's where shit hit the fan again. I'm thinking that we're going to, you know, breeze on through to the fucking instance. I look up and what the fuck do I see? The goddamn fucking priest is AFK again. I was like this close from just fucking kicking his ass. You know, I don't, actually, you know what? I'm not allowed to kick anymore. I kicked more people. Holy shit, I'm going fast. Yeah, I, I put this on super fast because, you know, I'm showing you guys that we actually wiped. I overshot the actual entrance. Right there, I just got dizzy watching that, by the way. I think I just need some whew, need some aspirin in a few. But, um, but yeah, I kicked so many people in the first week of Cataclysm doing Heroics because they were so bad that I, I cannot initiate any more kicks anymore. I can't. It won't let me. I can't initiate any kicks. I have to ask other people in Whispers to kick for me if someone is terrible. Well, usually they'll know who the terrible ones are. But, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, I just got this webcam, uh, you know, I, I guess you could say I'm pulling a Rurikon, her, 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 her. but um, he uses a Mac, so he doesn't really count. Fucking Mac. Who do you use Macs nowadays? Anyway, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> incoming fucking comment wars, Apple versus Microsoft, who wins, Rawr. whatever. But uh, the rogue lost. Uh, his way, by the way. The rogue didn't know where he was going. He entered the dungeon and he got lost. So we had to actually fucking summon the rogue to where we currently were. So we're going to pull these mobs. Like I said, these mobs are very tricky. Try to interrupt all the boars from those Twilight, whatever the fuck they're called. But uh, yeah, I'm liking the webcam thing. This webcam records in 1080p. So it's going to have really good, uh, really good, really good quality. Uh, the sound on it blows. Uh, the encoding on Logitech is complete and utter ass. So I'm actually using Audacity with uh, my professional Snowball mic here. God, that sounded bad. <laughs> Snowball. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just getting reminded of, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Fanboys, when Kevin Smith has, um, what's the name? His, it's Kevin Smith, and I forgot the other guy's name that he does the, the bits with. Um, he has, like, he, it's like some guy, he's sucking some dude's cock in the bathroom. He comes out, he's like, man, he's like, <laughs> he's like tender and womanly, right? You know, and uh, uh, Jay and Silent Bob, Jay and Silent Bob, there we go. And uh, the Jay character's in the bathroom sucking off some dude. He bursts out of the bathroom cleaning his mouth. <laughs> and then Kevin Smith goes, sweet and womanly, right? Oh, man, that was great. Fanboys, by the way, awesome movie. You guys should watch it. It's like a Star Wars, uh, you know, nerd fest versus Star Trek nerd fest. But uh, we're on the last boss here. Um, this boss is pretty simple. He has three ads. You want to have one person kite those three ads. We had the warlock do it in this instance. Um, you tank the boss wherever you want. Tank him away from the ads. Let the ads be kited. If the ads actually cast on you and touch you, you get a stacking debuff that uh, reduces the amount of healing you take. So it's kind of like a mortal strike. And uh, you don't want it on the tank because if you get too many stacks, the tank can't be healed, then I'm going to die. So um, usually the warlock... Um, I'm not sure how good of a job warlocks do kiting ads. Usually I'm used to either a hunter or a frost mage or any type of mage uh, class kiting the ads. Uh, Boomkins are pretty good at it too because they have the uh, typhoon that can slow them. and They can use that off of every cooldown. And they can root them in tangling roots and all that other shit. Nature's grasp. Is that what it's called? Nature's grasp? The one where you get hit and uh, the roots come up? I think that's the one. You guys can tell me and remind me later down in the comments somewhere here. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, this uh, heroic went, I guess it went pretty well. A lot of shit went wrong, but because, you know, my gear is so overpowered for this instance, I probably would have lived by myself against any one of these bosses. Uh, the first boss was really fun. Bone Crusher, I had a great time since I pulled like 15 mobs along with the boss. Uh, the second one, trying to kill that zealot with a, uh, you know, not so good healer. Uh, with the boss at the same time was pretty difficult. Third boss is my favorite of all time. Easy as cake. I love just putting him in the lava and killing him at the end. Uh, this boss, the achievement is if uh, to get four stacks or less of the uh, Mortal Strike debuff that they put on you. Uh, obviously, we didn't get it this time around because the Warlock, I think, got like six, seven stacks at one point. As you can see, um, a couple seconds ago, he was almost at 50% HP, but he got away. What I'm wondering 
is why isn't the warlock putting down a warlock portal for this? Wouldn't like a warlock portal been like a lot easier for him to kite the ads? Like kite the ads, kite the ads, kite the ads, warlock portal. Kite the ads, kite the ads, kite the ads, warlock portal. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe there was a, maybe he couldn't do it for whatever reason. Maybe he's not allowed to in this fight. I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't play a fucking warlock. They're fucking retarded. I only say that because they own me one versus one in PvP. I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this webcam stuff. Uh, it took me a while to set this shit up. Um, I'm going to be doing some shows in the future. I'm going to be doing some TGN Live with Hengus and um, Big C. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, live Rift shows, probably with Rurikon. Um, and those are going to be amazing, too, if you guys want to head on over to the Rift channel. Maybe some live uh, All Odds as well. Uh, get some dungeon action going whenever the hell I decide to level that up. I think I have to level to at least like 15 or 16 to start seeing those dungeons. But um, at the end of every uh, who needs CC question mark, um, I always hit my recount so I can see what does the most damage. And usually I would see Hammer of the Righteous and Avenger Shield as number one and two for my top damage dealer. But for some reason this time around, Crusader Strike was actually number two. Isn't that amazing? Crusader Strike was number two. And I was like, okay, well, I guess that works. So uh, yeah. This has been Tally with TGN.TV. You can visit me on my Facebook. I have a new fan page on Facebook, facebook.com slash Tally, T-O-W-E-L-L-I-E-E. -E. That's two L's and two E's with an I in the middle of them. So Tally, Tally, okay?